Gypsy quit Brood War? Really? No, I didn't hear that. You know the reason or what happened? Do you have a clip? Oh shit, I gotta watch that. Alright, sup guys. Jip here. This is gonna be my last take. That's it. One and done. I've been doing I've been saying that for the for the past two hours and honestly it's really exhausting. <laughs> when you just keep doing takes over and over and repeating yourself repeating the same things I, uh, uh but let's try and get this one done okay i'm so bad it's so weird because i enjoy like i feel like i'm pretty good at uh broadcasting and you know public speaking and stuff like that but when i'm uh when i have to sit down and get one point across uh in like one take it just all falls apart. I mean, I'm such a weirdo. I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, <laughs> it's so tough, honestly. It's really, really tough. Um, what I've learned from my videos, uh, the like feature videos that I make, is to get over this problem, um, what I'll do is I'll just record the whole thing and say everything that I want to say, like I have everything written down. And I'll just go through it and say everything I want to say. And if I mess up what I said, I'll just say it again immediately. And just like keep saying it until I get it correct. And then when I edit, I, I edit it all into one take. And I edit backwards. Because I know that the last time that I said it is going to be the best one. Because once I say it correctly, then I stop and I move on. So I edit it backwards. I just take the best take out of each one and I just remove all the bad takes and then I put it into a video and that that's how I make it happen. But James Gal, it's it's tough. That's really helpful tips. It is tough um, doing what he's doing right now where you're on camera and you're going to talk if you don't have any editing and you have a point you want to get across. Uh, it's really hard not to think about like what you look like and think about like Oh, that sounded stupid. And then like you lose your train of thought. You know what I mean? Um, once you make a mistake or whatever, it's tough. Uh, this happened in school too. When I was doing like presentations and stuff, it was th the worst disaster you could think of. I have a lot of good stories, a lot of disaster stories, but. We'll... In, in college, I actually took a public speaking course. that helped a lot. Learned a lot of skills from that. Get better at this. Okay. But yeah, uh, high so school was a disaster. Here, and uh, <laughs> this video is meant to be a bit of an update. Oh, Jip here. He said it again, right? Like he said Jip here at the beginning, and now he says it again. He's probably thinking like, didn't I already say that? <laughs> uh, he almost messed James himself Gout. up here. <laughs> Your broadcasting skills are okay, hand sign. <laughs> Regarding my oh, thank you. Twitch and my playing StarCraft. Uh, and the TLDR is basically that I am burnt out on StarCraft and I don't want to really play StarCraft anymore. Uh, at least nowhere near in the capacity that I have been up until now. And I've been trying to think about whether or not this was related to, um, you know, playing StarCraft or if it was related to streaming in particular. Uh, or to broadcasting or the content creation space, I guess. Uh, but here I am making a YouTube video. And in a sense, I'm actually, despite the fact that I'm frustrated over having to take so many takes because I'm awful at this, uh, but I'm enjoying like this. Is, I still enjoy making uh, videos and I'm sure I still would enjoy uh, streaming start or just streaming in general. I still want to kind of share, you know, the reason I got into all of this in the first place was to share my experiences uh, with other people and kind of just connect with other people in a certain way. Uh, and <laughs> so here I am way. making a YouTube video <laughs> still. So I'm not quite done, you know, uh, in that in that space, I guess. Uh, but I do feel a bit, I do feel pretty burnt out on StarCraft. And... I feel like I kind of owe it to my community. Uh, and I hate when, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm sure I, I hate when, when streamers and, uh, you know, whatever, they talk about their community as uh, in a, in so, uh, a self-important way. Certain like, way you know, look at what I've, I've created. <laughs> uh, uh, but that's not how I mean it, obviously. I think when you put in as much time 
right? as I have streaming, for example, uh, and and it takes a you know some some. Let me comment on that. Like um, the certain way that he uh, communicates or interacts with his fans, man. When I was in Gypsy's channel, like when I first started streaming and making videos, I kind of hung out in his channel a bit, and dude, it's. It's actually pretty toxic. This is a bit of backstory between me and Gypsy. Like the dude made fun of me for being a a teacher in Japan. Like it was some sort of joke job. And they're like, come on, man. What is this interaction James like? Gap. Let's get some positivity. No, Holy well, yeah, shit! It is kind of toxic. So toxic. And then he kicked me out multiple times. Banned me. Soon. And Gypsy? uh <laughs> yeah. Toxic. <laughs> Say it ain't so Kappa. <laughs> Say it ain't so, James yeah. James Galk. I got banned for two weeks for a joke. Yeah, I got banned for uh telling him that there was a hidden base and there actually was a hidden base. Um <laughs> he's like as soon as he found the hidden base, he just banned me. <laughs> James Galk. L M A O. Pretty toxic. I have a bunch of clips of him like shitting on me when I was playing. He was watching me play one time. He has a, a certain way of interacting. Um, I don't know why he could possibly be burned out being a dick all the time. That's, <laughs> uh, I, I, I uh, guess that might have some contribution. Uh, but I put in uh, an enormous, enormous amount of time. I'll share with you guys uh, in a bit uh, into into streaming and. It's a special thing when, you know, as as abrasive as I can be on stream. Yeah, as abrasive as he can be. I mean, James Galt. It's it's gotta. He's put, a pretty damn good Terran, but hard on himself. Yeah, it's gotta be a bit like um, torturous to be that abrasive all the time, you know, and like always, you know, fighting with your chat or like. Uh, Soon. I don't know. He's burned out talking shit and still yeah, losing talking, in front of so many people. Talking Feels shit. Feels bad man. All the time and, and having that like persona, I think, would burn me out as well. Yeah, that would be uh, tough. Especially, you know, recently, I feel like. Uh, but even before, you know, maybe it's something... Any In any case, I have been... A, you know, you guys know, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of a dick. Uh, <laughs> you know. He's self-aware uh, anyway. It's something special <laughs> that when I put in this much time, got to give him that. Other people show up. James Gap. And, face uh, with tears of joy. Share in that time with me and support me just by being there. Uh, because as you know, when you stream, I'm sure some of you guys have tried streaming, it takes a long time to build an audience and when you're just there streaming to to nobody, there's no point to it, right? And when you're not interacting with nobody, there's no point to it. Uh, so I'm very grateful to everyone who has kept supporting me throughout these years. Um, and, you know, as uh, there's a negative connotation in a sense in terms of the, you know, the parasocial aspect of, of streaming. But I, I really do think there's a, a, a real social aspect to it uh, for myself, uh, precisely because of what I've just talked about, you know, um, you kind of get the same people coming in and you build a familiarity with them. And before you know it, there's a meaningful relationship in there. I mean, I play with, you know, I play games off stream with a, a bunch of my viewers and we're all in the discord and I've mute my discord like three times already. And still people keep coming back and I really do appreciate. <laughs> and, you know, I know that uh, people in that discord get along with each other. So, before I knew it, I, you know, we had a nice little community and I really do care about that. And it's been hard for me to distance myself uh, entirely from StarCraft. Uh, it's partly understandable. Because of that. And that's why I feel I need to kind of, uh, I feel the need to give an explanation or to give an update. Uh, but also to the StarCraft community because I have been so involved in the StarCraft community. So I know people have expected me to not expected me, but you know, people ask me to cast stuff. People ask me to play in tournaments, um, and you know, it's been very fulfilling 
uh, these couple of years for me for myself to to compete and to cast and to be a part of the community and I know the community will keep going on without me I mean without a doubt obviously I'm not <laughs> delusional in that sense so um, but uh, yeah I don't know I've just been I, I've been uh, pretty much uh, burnt out and I, I think there's a lot of reasons and I don't want to get too ranty and too into it What's in the background here? Like, is he playing hundreds of games or something like that? Like, what are we looking at in the background? I can't even see this. Oh, okay, average viewers, highest recorded number of concurrent viewers. Okay, I see it now. I'm like, I'm looking at it on OBS. It's a little bit I hard think. to see. Uh, but I, I'm just kind of burnt out on StarCraft. Um, I don't really enjoy playing it as much as I used to. Uh, you know, I would say I, I probably have around 20,000 hours uh, into it, right? Uh, of playing, and as you guys can see here, I've got like 4,000 hours, give or take 4,500, give or take streaming StarCraft. Um, so it's crazy. Uh, and at some point, it, it you know, as you guys have experienced in your lives, undoubtedly, um, you know, we all go through burnout. And this has been mine. And uh, I just don't enjoy the game as much as I used to. Mm. And that's not to dissuade. And, you know, it's it's hard for me to make a video like this because I have been so adamant about uh, promoting StarCraft. And I've always been super passionate about Brood War. And I still am really passionate about Brood War. Uh, and I really would like to... I, I really wish it could be much more than it is. And I, you know, I've always told people oh you guys should keep playing if you enjoy playing this game if you really want a game like starcraft like brood war it's already here just play it uh and i still believe in that and especially for you know the groups of people that are playing the game like for example the cpl or like you know if you're playing the game and you have a group of friends you play with uh, maybe you play bgh maybe, whatever I think it's important that you guys keep playing the game if you enjoy it and i'm not trying to be negative uh, it, towards the game uh, but for me it's just become very uh, it, it, it's just been uh, kind of a I mean like I've mentioned it it, it, it just feels like a burnout um, I, I don't understand just take a break I do this all the time I mean I've been playing the game for like 20 years um, it happens it happens you get tired of playing play too many ladder games it's annoying you just stop playing for a week play something else play a different game for a little while you can come back to starcraft later why do we need this announcement sorry i'll go on and partly because i spent so much time into it but also you know we all know that the game's not really supported that well at all um so in, in i terms think there's of also an issue where you get ladder, to a certain skill the, level the, in starcraft and it's a lot less awful, fun and a lot right? more like serious to continue to awful. grow as a player is meaningless there's it's no daunting seasons. without there's insane work ethic for. The experience playing it is... Oh, sorry, let me read that. A certain skill level? I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> um, I thought that you would get to a certain skill level and it would be more, like, enjoyable and fun. It, the, the grind Gap. up that way is, uh, uh -huh. is the annoying part, no? Maybe that's, uh, that's a misunderstanding. But I've found every time that I, like, increase my skill level... It feels more fun because I actually understand more, and like I feel like I'm playing more of the poker part of the of the game rather than just the mechanical, you know, hammering of the keys and trying to hit the build orders. Do you know what I mean? Like once I learn the build orders and I can actually hit something, then I feel James like Gap. I'm actually playing. To me, Jip is semi-pro. It's different. Extra, an extra level of game underneath the main game of like uh, you know macroing and all that stuff. To me, Jip is semi-pro, it's different. I don't know, maybe. Maybe. Awful. One game you get turn rate 20 high with someone, and then the next game, same same person, it bugs out, and you get the turn rate 12 bug or whatever. It's a terrible experience, and the alternatives, okay, yes, shield battery is there, but the Korean players don't use it. The Korean community, the vast majority of StarCraft players don't use it, so it's not really a solution. Um... And so, unless you have your own group of friends to play with, uh, just playing on the client itself James is Gauck. quite dull. It's quite hey, boring. Hey, can you explain this part?
Which part? James Galk. Shield battery? Shield battery thing. Shield battery is like a third party program that allows you to get uh, StarCraft games. Um, it works way better than Battle.net. You never lag out or have like a, a dropped connection uh, when you're trying to join a game. And it also reveals the map. So there's no like blackness on the map. It's just fog of war, um, which is nice. You know, if you're playing a new map, you can actually see where the bases are and stuff. It's pretty nice. James like they just LTHX and turn rate bug. Turn rate bug. I actually don't know anything about that. I know the turn rate, like turn rate really blows on um, Battle.net, but on Shield Battery, it's a lot better. Like they kind of fix the latency issues uh, in a lot of ways. So the one thing I don't like about Shield Battery, honestly, is that uh, the UI is not good when you're trying to cast. Like if you open a replay, the UI is just like you're playing the game. So I really prefer the brood or the the battle net UI so that I can like remove certain parts of it and and show certain parts of it at certain times so that I can see more of the screen. Do you know what I mean? But the UI on um Shield Battery, maybe they have like a different setting or something. I haven't messed around with it too much, but it's just it, it looks like you're playing, which is not really the greatest for casting and recording. But whatever. In my opinion, it's gotten to it for for me at least. Uh, and also, it's just been the the as a result. I think also it's just the community as a whole, the audience for the game. Outside of Korea, Sorry. has just stagnated. Gypsy uh, is a talented really player, but I think his mindset uh, lot, is weak you know, for a game really like StarCraft at high level. Um, burnout was only a matter really of time. On the he could just take a break, uh, but this again, is more like, than just burnout. A, I've been a so zealous I proponent. Think of, there's more to this than matter. he's being honest about. Enjoy, play the game that you enjoy playing. I think he's getting to it, Shun. Um, like he's prefacing with the game is kind of shit right now. And then he's gonna talk about money or something like that. And be I think that that's where we're going. That you want, you know, be that that audience that you want the game to have. Uh, but from my from my point of view, in terms of the amount of work and the amount of time I've put into my stream, uh, I'm just not getting rewarded in the same way um, as I used to. So, for example, guys, uh, you know. I can go on a long historical, you know, a nice story time of exactly where I was doing one. This is around when StarCraft Remastered came out. Uh, here is uh, when I came back, you know, this was around the, the beginning of the, this was when I was living in, in Japan, actually. And I came back in April uh, because of the oh, pandemic. Shit. I was going to. I didn't know he was living in Japan. Oh, man, that's funny. Why was he living in Japan? Does anybody know? I had no idea. That's funny. That's like right James around the Gap. time. Yeah, bro. That's like right around the time when I um started my YouTube channel was 2019. To actually uh, live in, in, 2019, Japan, in Japan. Uh, but the pan family, pandemic happened and my I came home because, you know, my family is basically my mom and my grandmother who are you know at this point kind of elderly <laughs> you know my grandma's like 92 or 93 i i forget my, my mom's getting up there too i didn't want to leave them alone uh, but at the same time i always you know prior to this time here up I, I was still very motivated i was still passionate about streaming and i really thought maybe i could build something especially you know maybe ah so maybe that's maybe that's why he the the toxicity about my living in japan he had to come back for the pandemic he's kind of probably pissed off about it he's probably having a good time over here james galk it's possible yes Playing perhaps Starcraft, i could build something uh from from here um so i still wanted to 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 pursue this and then, so as you guys can see, and, and I had a pretty successful time, especially in the early years. But as you guys can see, it pretty much plateaued. And, uh, you know, the first year, the first two years, I would say this is really when it started, uh, my, my streaming uh, adventure. Um, I was very motivated and it was very kind of, it, it was a lot of fun. And it was very fulfilling, and I really felt a sense of progression. 
um, and you guys can see. Uh, honestly, I'm gonna be. Uh, I'll share my. I'll be transparent here and share my earnings so you guys understand what I'm talking about. And uh, so you guys see, you know, that this is another video I could make about the difficulties of being kind of a Twitch streamer and up and coming or not top one, top point one percent Twitch streamer. Uh, but as you guys can see, you know, the first, this was the first year 2020. I mean, this is not, and you'll see a trend. I mean, this is not the greatest hourly wage, but for doing this as a, you know, beginning and especially it's, it's, um, not bad. It's something of an independent, you know, I'm working on my own. Or how long is this? Uh, et cetera, oh. et cetera, et cetera. It's like a passion project. It was really, really motivating. Uh, and you know, let's go through this. I mean, 20, but this is what it comes out to like something like $4 an hour, uh, of hourly wage. Uh, 2021 was the same, I think for the most part, a uh, thousand hours stream around for $4,000. Uh, wait, January 1st to December. Oh, so it's like a year. I thought it was a month he was looking at. <laughs> I, I actually thought it was a month. So that that last one was was a year, eighteen hundred dollars. Am I reading that James right? Galk. LOL. Oh damn, yeah, yeah, that's rough. That's rough. So twenty twenty one. Well, twenty twenty one. He. Oh, twenty twenty two. Oh my gosh. Pewit. Oh wait, okay, this is one month. Those earnings are brutal for the amount of time put in. Yikes. Yikes. This is what it comes out to like something like $4 an hour. $4 uh, an hour, yeah. Uh, 2021 was the same, I think, for the most part. Uh, 1,000 hours stream around for $4,000. Uh, and then 2022. 1,000 hours for $4,000, $4 an hour, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Basically, oh, sorry, I didn't do this right. To keep the another thousand hours the next year and less money yeah i see short seat, for example here it was less than last than, than the first year but still 2022 i still felt pretty good about it but then 2023 and 2024 onwards um i mean it, you know for example these days of course it, it's just been kind of the same deal it's, i get these months where i'll stream 100 hours plus plus and my revenue is still around three hundred dollars four hundred dollars uh and i know you guys know that's not a <laughs> that's not a livable wage that's not an acceptable income uh and that's some some other uh you know we could get into it it's kind of insane to me that uh twitch takes half of my money uh you know when you know, for a site like Twitch to kind of keep growing, I think they need to support some of the more up and coming streamers rather than uh, give, you know, it's a, a feast or famine type situation. I don't want to get into it, guys. You guys understand. I'm basically Twitch. is. I think what he's what he's talking about here is like maybe there should be like a, a variable rate. You know what I mean? As you like improve. But I think what they actually do with Twitch is when you become super popular, they lower the amount that Twitch takes because they don't want you to leave, right? <laughs> Whereas when you're like a when you're small, they don't care if you leave or go or leave or come, like join or just take off because there's a million, million, million Twitch streamers who are small, and the the problem with the the value proposition of Twitch or not the value proposition, like the, the actual way that they make money and how they're spending money is that um, most of their money goes to uh, streaming channels that like nobody's watching and nobody's donating to. Like there's so many different streams that are just running all the time, just hundreds and thousands of hours of streaming content that barely anybody's watching. Um, and that's where I think a lot of their like uh costs come from. I'm not sure about that, but yeah, they don't want to encourage small streamers. I don't think they want just like a few really, really big streamers. 
That's where their money actually comes from. That's where their revenues come in. Um, so I don't, I don't see why they would want to do this. I, I mean, encouraging small streamers so that maybe you know they can develop more big streamers. I don't know. I don't know if they need more encouragement. There's enough. There's enough of them. <laughs> there's so many. There's so many street people who are willing to just put their head down and just try to stream. You know, like they don't need much encouragement. I don't think. Poet. This is basically taking I hate to say it, but I think the streamers speak Twitch of asking for subs slash donations subs yields results, but most small whatever. streamers feel dirty doing it this. or whatever. It says, streamers speak for asking for donation subs yields results, but most small streamers feel dirty. Mm, it feels a little dirty, yeah. Yeah. It feels like being like, um, like busking or something like that, you know what I mean? On the street. <clears throat> People are just like in and out, in and out walking by or whatever and you're just kind of begging um but you're doing something worthwhile like people are watching there's no reason not to ask for donations like uh you're giving them something that they enjoy but it does feel a little dirty yeah you're right <clears throat> most people aren't comfortable doing that me on the other hand <laughs> Uh, but as you get more viewers, as you become a bigger streamer, you um, you can get a better cut, which the bigger streamers do. You get to you can get to seventy percent instead of fifty percent, and that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, like the bigger streamers, it's the opposite of what he was saying before. But he he's he he is right about this that uh, bigger streamers get a higher percentage of their actual earnings. Twitch takes the last, it's because they want to keep them around. You know, you might think that might masquerade, you know, meritocratically, like, oh yeah, that's a nice uh, ladder to climb, and eventually once you've des you earned it, you've earned it. But that's not how the world works, as I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware of. And again, I'm getting kind of sidetracked. This is an issue completely separate from what I'm talking about. And this is kind of related to, to me putting, because I've earned, the, these are my earnings playing StarCraft through StarCraft. What I've built through, uh, through StarCraft, basically. Um, but it's obviously very difficult when you don't have that financial security, when you don't have that financial kind of projection into the future, like, oh, I will get more. Uh, but if you don't have that fi financial projection in the moment as well, uh, it's difficult to, to keep justifying what you're doing. Uh, so it's not for a lack of time put in, I think, or lack of effort. Uh, and it's very difficult from a content creation perspective to make it in StarCraft because the branding of StarCraft as a, as a competitive game is even outside of Korea, which is kind of ironic, but outside of Korea, still the most uh, important and the most popular brands are Korean player, uh, Korean mm, players' names. It's true, it's true. People don't really think about, you know, currently, let's say, DeWalt or... Siki or Bonneth or Gypsy, when they think about StarCraft players, they think about, again, Flash, Jadong, uh, and Bisu. And this is also an issue that certain Korean players face, like, for example, Speed, who's an incredibly talented uh, player, but just, you know, doesn't really have that brand name. And he's kind of gatekept, in a sense, from even Korean Pro League, etc. That's also a topic I could get into. But even if we, we look at a channel like StarCraft, StarCast, uh, you can see that the, you know, at some point, uh, the strategy, and not just StarCast TV, I mean, you could look at a uh, Artosis cast. Artosis cast. Oh, and I wonder if he's going to look at my channel. <laughs> he also mostly casts um, Korean He doesn't players. put the names. <laughs> because even the non-Korean speaking, the English speaking community, has basically this narrative that only Korean players are good at the game. What do you guys think about Star Cat or or sorry, Artosis Cas um channel? Like he never puts the name on the title. I don't know if it's smart or if it's if it's bad. I feel like um it has its merits, right? Like if you are gonna cast somebody who's not as high level Basically, you're there to listen to Artosis, right? You're not you're not coming to his channel to uh 
chase like a name. Do you know what I mean? James you're not there Gap. because like, oh, it's a Bisu it's cast, and you're like, certain videos, click, but it let's pulls you in. let's jump in and you know watch this cast by him. I, I feel like that's what um, casters like, like I have to do, or like other people have to do to uh, who are smaller to like attract audiences. Is like you you need like a big name, right? But I feel like Artosis, he's embraced not putting the names so that he can have any type of game that he wants with any James players. Gap. And Artosis casts you're there. Are part of my morning, and yes, I watch for light. You're Flash, there to um. He has to advantage listen of to him, being around you know what I mean? forever. Yeah, he Boyd. has the advantage of being around I forever. Agree That's with right. What you are saying. I also think Artosis actually does a lot of non-Korean players these days. I watch him pretty regularly right now. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking about Stealth doing the same sort of thing. Essence. I'm adding it on a little bit. I feel bit. like it's bad because I sometimes click video if it's a certain person like Barracks or Queen. Mm. Yeah. I I'm I'm like kind of mixing it in, you know what I mean? I'm like adding some videos where I don't put the names of the players. It's it's working okay. I don't know. If it's like a really big name, like if if this is like a James uh, Galk best Stay versus part of our week two. light game Sorry. or something like that like okay i it's might as well put their names on there of being even more clickbaity and not rely on star power mm. of the players it also does bring more focus onto him as a caster and the content rather than the players james galk your kcm stuff is incredible it's done purely for the purpose of being even more clickbaity and not rely on star power of other players it also does more to focus on him as a caster and the content rather than the players. Yeah. I don't know if he's that clickbaity. I know that he has some... Um, I, I like that he stopped putting his face on every single one. I remember that was pretty clickbaity. Like, every single cat, every single thumbnail was like, you know? <laughs> or like this. <laughs> his face on the front. James Galk. <laughs> Look at his video covers. <laughs> Mistress. My morning routine includes a Mayoyaga video. <laughs> I watch it till completion. Oh my gosh. Miss, what's up, man? You and all the video commenters just started deleting all the comments. Disgusting slobs. And only, only Korean players can. And, and so, you know, if you're interested in StarCraft, Hell most wait. likely you're interested in Korean I am players. also glad he toned down the thumbnails, yeah, LOL. Sense. And that's another issue I can get into. Of course, non Korean players could be competitive, but it's very hard to get into that. Uh, to get into that ecosystem, uh, you know, there's a huge cultural and language barrier. There's also a linguistic barrier, but there's also Mistress. issues with latency. I see Gypsy is not enjoying uh, his millions sort, from sort of streaming. Infrastructure issues. <laughs> I see Gypsy is not enjoying his millions from streaming. Yeah, you might, you might say that. You might say that. So blah, blah, blah. The point is that I no longer really feel fulfilled nor do I feel confident in any kind of future involving this game. Um, I was actually thinking about making a video. I think this might be my next video, guys. Um, let me know what you think about this. StarCraft Doomer. That's going to be my next. I'm going to do like a meme video of people who are completely, uh, you know, uh, James Galk. sad ha, about ha, the ha. game. Oh, Starcraft is gonna die. Starcraft is dead. <laughs> I think that would be a fun concept. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Relative to the amount of time that I've put into into streaming and you know and competing, really, because for me, that's another thing that has been difficult to balance. Is Starcraft my and crypto boomers are as similar. A competitor, in my identity as like a streamer and etc that's also something no no not boomer doomer doomer you ever seen those like doomer videos <clears throat> there's like a a whole ecosystem of meme videos on youtube where it's gen z doomer James or something Gaff. like that yeah okay i you, meant you, doomer you, you knew it okay gotcha i think i could get into uh but yeah the 
What I want to really say Doomer is Terran that can't get out of I've just been very burnt out, guys. <laughs> and I hope you understand that uh, I just don't really enjoy playing StarCraft, nor am I as motivated This video has StarCraft. a vibe of like Gypsy elaborately but, explaining why he didn't feel I well enough really to go to school today. Like to... <laughs> shouldn't. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's funny. Continue kind of my journey and maybe start <laughs> new uh, with everything I've experienced with StarCraft uh, moving forward. And I would really like to kind of dabble into this space that I'm doing right now, you know, making kind of YouTube videos and, and because I. So just do it then. Like, why do we need this video explanation? Just, just make the videos. I don't understand. Um, I, I feel like he's making this video so that when he isn't streaming anymore, people won't be, or if he's streaming a different game, people won't say like, hey, are, why aren't you streaming Brood War anymore? Or like, you know, commenting on his videos. Dude, people are still going to, like, nobody's going to watch this video. Um, and even if they do, they're still going to ask that question. You know what I mean? So I don't, I, yeah. Um, I guess he feels like uh, James Gal. He owes it to Very people. True. That's kind of what he was explaining before. Was that he he needs like to explain himself. He feels like he owes people an explanation, but it's like Soon. yeah. I, I don't revert know. back to my previous statement of there's more to this than he lets on. I Just my opinion. Feel like more to this than he lets on. My mm, thoughts on a lot maybe. of things. I still feel like I have a lot to share that I want to share. And so, and I'd still enjoy streaming. I just don't enjoy streaming StarCraft anymore. So I think I will be trying to become a bit more active or at least try and set a new schedule to basically do some variety streaming. And I know it's probably, you know, James it's Gout. something that I'm going to be working on. I take and what it's he's saying at face value. I do value. want to do in the less involved, in the less, uh, uh, not involved, but in the less committed way. Uh, but also on a YouTube front, I would love to, you know, for example, we see all these new videos on of like RTS developer, like the new RTS is coming out, and uh -oh. the developer Stormgate. That I have so a we lot got a of Stormgate that gamer I would love to talk about, or maybe I would love mm -hmm. to talk about some of the things I mentioned in this video, you know, with respect to Twitch and the income structure it has, and um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't know if you guys are, would be interested in any of that, or I, I do have a lot of ideas going forward and I would love to make more videos. Uh, but I also would love to hear what you guys and genuinely, I genuinely mean this because I'm also kind of looking for direction myself, uh, with respect to, to this space. So if you guys have any, you know, just. Sure. Let me know what you He's think taking the about variety streamer plunge. What I've Rip. said. Let me know what. Hard to break uh, the mold, but possible to make it work. Another toxic variety streamer. Let's just in before he makes a billion dollars. You would, if you would like to see me c cover uh, certain aspects of, you know, let's say the gaming world James or certain Gout. games, or if you'd like Kinda to see me weird to play say certain I am games, tired of Twitch, but still do the content. Like play, you know, for a while I was playing Dark Souls on stream, and I don't think he's saying he's really tired well. of Twitch. I think he um, said he's tired you know, of I, I'm gonna StarCraft. Be playing, I'm going to be playing some MMOs on stream for sure, and I understand if people won't Richard. really want to Hi, come back Thanks and for the watch me along not with play other games Soon. not related to if RTS. He talks and louder, I think faster, this can go into even more another toxic, discussion about how might just make it. Uh, you know, my identity and my worth as a streamer was so interlinked with my ability to play StarCraft and it's it became Soon. so one dimensional at Richard, hey, that Richard, I wasn't my pleasure really man, to always a fun time casting uh, explore with other you know, other areas of, of myself, uh, especially as a broadcaster. And, uh, you know, there's more to life, guys, than being good at one thing, right? And I'm sure, you know, and, and it's not really that special that I'm good at StarCraft because it's just what I've been doing my entire lives. I'm sure you're all very good at what you guys do as your professions or as your, as your careers. I mean, anyone can be good given the amount of time you put into something, right? Um, so... Anyway, the point is, I'm not 
I think I'll be trying to be a bit more active on my YouTube. Let me know what you guys would love to watch. I think I'm gonna make some videos revol and some react videos maybe some 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 kind of commentary video. Boy, more react comment commentary videos. Excellent creativity. Videos on some of the new releases, uh, developer talks regarding the new RTS games because I think they they don't really you know <laughs> there's a lot to say about that. Uh, but yeah, I've gotten through to the end. Only 20 minutes. I was hoping it was shorter, but I'm not. I told you guys this is going to be the last cut. Um, and yeah, thanks for listening. And I hope that uh, you guys have a great day. And uh, make sure to join my Discord. I'm going to link it in the YouTube comments. And make sure to check out my Twitch still and my YouTube. I think uh, I will be working on it a bit more from here on out. And hopefully you guys can kind of help me. Uh you know, steer in the right direction. But much love, and see you guys next time. Well, when he tries yeah. to make a Join his YouTube Discord channel... so he can ban you from it, K-E-K-W. <laughs> Join so he can ban me? Yeah, right. Um, a video Tell telling it. me that he wants to Basically try and make like more YouTube videos success, without doing any editing will not get and you to millions makes it like subs. a stream. It seems, it seems a little bit funny. But uh, like, why? Why not? If you've got to do, if it's really tough for you to do it all in one take like that, why not, like, write out a script or just like, edit your video? I know that's a foreign concept to a Twitch streamer, but if you're actually gonna do YouTube, just do YouTube. We have to, we have to learn some editing. Makes it a lot easier. I'm telling you, makes it a James lot Gout. easier to make videos if Thanks you edit. Thanks for watching this with us, Sion. No worries, man. Um. I was interested too. I've uh, I've watched quite a bit of Gypsy, and um, I actually can't scroll down here. I wanted to take a look at how many videos he's making. James Galk. Because everybody how says can I learn to edit with everybody says that they want to make YouTube, but very very few people actually make videos and put them out. <laughs> it's really really rare that people actually follow through with this shit. His last video before this one was his three months ago ASL 17 predictions. It just, it, it does take a lot of effort to stream. So maybe once he stops streaming, well, he said he's still going to stream. So I guess he's not stopping streaming. He's going to do variety. Variety. I'm just was going to say that if you're not streaming, it's a lot easier if you got more time to, to, put more effort into making YouTube videos, but interesting question. How can I learn to edit with DaVinci? Um, the same way I learned, or how I learned, is just YouTube videos, man. You can learn anything from YouTube. Yeah, there's a video for anything. Like, for example, if I want two f like pictures to like rotate around each other or something like that, I'll just type into YouTube like um editing photos in 3D and then I will look up a 3D um program or I'll look up a pro I look up a a guide. That's it. That's all you need a mic. What type of equipment do you need? Yeah you just just a mic. I didn't even have a mic when I started YouTube. Um, I just used like my laptop microphone or something like that. I remember like some of my first videos I recorded on my phone, my voice, and then I like edited it. Like I, I uploaded it onto my computer and then I edited it onto, like I just held my phone like this and I just talked into it, uh, while I was watching the game. And then I just uploaded it onto, uh, my computer and then edited it with the video and just uploaded it like that. <laughs> But uh, I started out on um, Open Shot. You guys know that program? It's like a completely open, so open source software uh, video editor. I don't know. I'm still, I'm still not that good. It was a long process. I wish you guys could go back and look at some of my older videos. I wish I could go back and look look at some of my oldest videos. But I got banned like a year in.
from YouTube for using Africa TV shit. So like my first few videos, my first like several hundred videos, I guess. No, not not that many. How many was it? Like maybe like 80 videos, 50 videos, something like that. All just gone, just wiped out, sadly. I had to restart from the beginning. Just talking about Gypsy, yeah. I'm, I'm not really sure why we needed to, to hear that. But look, he made a he made a YouTube video. It was pretty okay, um, and I can see that it did pretty well. It got him like two k views in three days, which is pretty decent. But um, we'll see what kind of videos he starts putting out. I'll follow him. We'll see what happens.